Okay, bula everybody. Um, we're here talking to you from Melbourne in Australia and Hawaii. And um, I'm here with Dr. Tarisi and she is, you're based at um, Univer University of Hawaii Hilo, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, do you want to say a little bit more about what you've been up to lately? Yep, sure. So, Bulevinak, everyone. Vinaka for uh, tuning in to our first uh, talk story. Uh, my name is Teresi Bunindilo, and I'm originally from the island of Kandavu on the south of Fiji. Uh, I've been here, actually, tomorrow is exactly two years uh, that I've set foot here uh, in Hawaii. Um, for the role that I've got at the moment. So I'm an assistant professor in anthropology um, here at the University of Hawaii Hilo on the Big Island. And uh, I was in New Zealand before I moved over to Hawaii. So I was at the University of Auckland Pacific Studies as well as the Auckland University of Technology in Manukau. Uh, so I was working there at AUT uh, Manukau campus, thanks to Walter Fraser and uh, Professor Damon Salesa uh, for their support uh, for all the work that I was doing in Aotearoa, um, that I was able to complete my PhD and uh, made the move to Hawaii. So yes, I'm really happy um, to be here at this hour, um, talking, to, talking with Kirsty Close uh, and sharing um, some interesting information about the Pacific, which we, both feel strongly about and I think it's important that we as indigenous Pacific people or people of Oceania, uh, we should uh, be proud of our region and get to know more about where we belong um, so that we can be able to pass on this amazing uh, knowledge to our children and our grandchildren. Mm, Vinaka, um, yeah, I should just say to um Vinaka for taking the time to do this and um, it's been really fun planning this with you and and kind of thinking about how we can share what we know with everybody as broadly as possible. Mm. Um, so just so people know a little bit about me, at the moment I am um, running a business called History's Way. I've just changed the name of it. Um, so what I want to do is connect historians or people who are interested in history from across the world. So, and that includes across the Pacific because I've worked in um, Fiji at the University of South Pacific and then in Papua New Guinea at the Pacific Adventist University. Um, and I've worked at a bunch of Australian institutions like um, Deakin University where I'm doing some teaching now and Bachelor Institute up in Darwin. So, um, I just think there's a great network of scholars who are really interested to know more about the past and have so much to share. And if we're able to use social media a little bit more to do that, then there's lots of potential there for really great discussions. So um, that's, that's what's going on. That's kind of what's prompted us to do this. And, um, yes. and hopefully everyone enjoys what we present. Um, we're happy to take questions and answers but I'm just conscious that I can't see anything coming up on the zoom screen um, it may be coming up on Facebook and if that's happening we will get back to everybody once this is the recordings finished and we can answer later uh -huh. yeah but um, I'll share I think I figured out how to share the screen so that oh, we can beautiful. look at our presentation yay yeah. this is awesome yes uh, okay, okay. It's a lot to make changes. Uh, technology, it's kind of working so far for us. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, hopefully that will work. It's amazing. Mm. Oh, no. Maybe it won't work. Can um, oh yes, it's there. there. You got it. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can see it. Right. Um, okay, play from the start. All right. So, do you want to just let me know when you want me to move it along? So that I've got the our nice Saturday talk story <laughs> image there. Um, 
this is great off. yeah um all right I so you, you're going to take us take the lead which is great so yeah i'll turn to you okay all right um as you can see on the seminar content i've kind of deliberately used the word oceania um i've kind of you know consciously you know starting to move away from the word pacific uh and that's something i feel very um uh, passionate about and I'm sharing it with my students as well uh, the importance of using Oceania over the word Pacific um, maybe for those who may be wondering uh, why I've uh, decided to do that is the to me the word Pacific is um, uh, quite restrictive uh, but also we know that the word was given to us you know um, it wasn't something that um, you know we we treasure or something that we created um, I believe that the word Oceania is much more powerful um, and it's much more inclusive and it's uh, um, something that is more, um, has kind of like a celebratory uh, reasoning to it. So that's why uh, you can see the word Oceania uh, placed there. So um, uh, Dr. Kirsty and myself um, have kind of decided that this is not just a one-off. Uh, we would like to do a series of it, if, if it's possible to do a three um, webinar like this, to make it a, a, a three seminar a web or seminar series, um, uh, that'll be really good. So that uh, it's, this is quite a large topic and we cannot answer all questions, you know, in one session. So if we could do this on the first Saturday of every month, uh, that will be great. Um, so, Kirsty and I will be sharing um, our plans on social media uh, about uh, the next time we can meet. Because uh, I'm sure the presentation today will uh, encourage people to ask questions um, and we'd love to answer those questions too. So, I'll try and uh, um, keep a uh, maybe half an hour presentation and then have a Q&A at the end uh, for those of you who have questions to ask. Okay, so this is kind of how um, the, the seminar or the webinar is um, um, divided. So kind of looking at Oceania as we know now, uh, Oceania millions of years ago and uh, looking to the future. Um, and uh, I think dividing it up into three parts like this is, is important so that it's kind of taking us through a timeline and we can be able to put ourselves within the timeline. Um, the Oceania millions of years ago is, an, is a topic that I'm very passionate about, uh, particularly that this is an, a topic that not everybody knows, um, but I've been very fortunate to uh, uh, be part of uh, the, the courses that I took at the University of the South Pacific. So I just want to do a shout out to my professors that really um, and engaged with me when I was doing my undergraduate there um, with Professor Patrick Nunn, uh, Professor Randy Thayman, Professor Gibson, um, and I think there's also my secondary school teacher, um, uh, Mrs. Mere Vave Teleni. She was an amazing geography teacher in high school, and uh, I think she kind of planted that seed for me to, uh, you know, just enjoy geography and get to know our uh, our islands you know what's on top of the ocean and what's underneath uh, and i think that's kind of uh, something that we need to learn and appreciate and kind of be be aware you know when an earthquake happens why you know uh, when a volcano is exploding on the island of tana or when the volcano is exploding here on the big island of hawaii why is it happening? Uh, because there's some geological um, reasoning about it, and it's so fascinating. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, today, okay? Okay, next. Okay, next slide, thank you. Yeah, so today's, uh, yeah, hopefully by the end of the seminar, you know, we can be able to uh, familiarize ourselves with uh, the islands, uh, the names of the islands, and uh, also um, appreciating the you know the changes and the naming of some of our islands uh, at the moment you know most of us are like talking about Melanesia and Micronesia and Polynesia you know all these words were given to us you know they were words based on anthropologists yeah? they came um, into the Pacific and they looked at uh, how we look yeah they look at our hair 
uh, they look at the size of the islands, they kind of group uh, the Pacific up. And I think this is really the opposite of Oceania. So Oceania is more uniting. Yeah, it's very powerful. It brings all of us as one people, whereby this petitioning is kind of like quite divisive. That's how I feel. And I think I just want to put it out there. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so I think um, looking at the map of the Pacific is uh, uh, something I think it's important for all of us to uh, look at and also to remind ourselves who are our neighbors? Who is your neighbor? Yeah, I think that there's the first question you need to ask. If you're from Fiji, do you know the islands next to you? Yeah, uh, if you are from the Solomon Islands, do you know who is next to you or who is, you know, um, just across the ocean from you? Um, and it's very interesting, uh, Dr. Kirsty, you know, now that I'm here in the Northern Pacific, uh, because I was, you know, I went to school in the Southern Pacific and I went to um, the University of the South Pacific. See, it's all, you know, again, you know, um, put into div divisions, uh, mm -hmm. even though the university is University of the South Pacific, but it also includes students from the North, you know, and I feel like, how would the students feel from those in the North if they come to USP? And it's like, I'm, am I supposed to be part of this university? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know there's all politics of names and politics of uh, naming places, so we won't go there today. Um, but uh, we will discuss sort of like uh, uh, knowing who your neighbors are. And uh, since I'm teaching here in Hawaii, I've noticed a lot of my students here are just familiar with the North. And that's, that's okay. Yeah, that's understandable. And then uh, I invited one of my colleagues in January of this year, uh, my sister, Dr. Nuisifa uh, Seve Williams, who is from New Way and currently lives in Cook Islands, but was born in Aotearoa. See, so she belongs to three islands. <laughs> and uh, I invited her to come to my class. And then she posed the same question to the students. And then when the students introduced themselves, especially the Pacific students, yeah, the, ones, the ones from uh, Palau, from Yap, from Kosrai, from Chuk, um, you know, Dr. Luisifa, you know, kind of confessed and said she is only familiar with the islands down in the south of Oceania. She's only familiar with, um, she said, you know, the Cook Islands, where she's from. And uh, she kind of vouched herself that she will try and get to know the islands up in the North uh, Oceania. And I think that's something that uh, we should learn today is for us as of people of Oceania, we need to know who are our neighbors. I think that's first and foremost. And if there are teachers that are listening in, uh, to this webinar, I think it's very important. I think a really good advice is to use maps in your classes. And that's something that I do on a weekly basis here. Even in Aotearoa, when I was teaching at the University of uh, uh, Auckland at the Pacific Studies, I always have a map. And I'm teaching in New Zealand for 12 weeks and they see this map 12 weeks straight. And, um, and that's something I do here too. Uh, the, the, the reasoning is that I really want the students to connect with where I'm from, you know. I want them to know the islands. Not only that, I want to, them to know what is a capital city, what languages do they speak, what kind of life do they, you know, live, and what kind of food do they eat. It's amazing. We actually live in a very uh, beautiful place in the world. So, I was thinking, Kirsty, if it's okay, yeah, yeah, just to share some facts for, of the Pacific Ocean or Ocean yeah, with all of us. Um, but I don't know about the audience out there, but uh, maybe we'll do a test at mm -hmm. the end of this uh, presentation. Um, just some facts, which is very cool to know. Um, out of all the Earth's surface, the whole Earth that we all live on, um, for the Pacific, um, let me see. Yes, so, well, I'll take one step back. For the whole Earth's surface, there's 70.8% comprising of the ocean or water. 292 is just land. Okay, so that's putting, in, putting Oceania into context. So this is the whole world. So now, let's come into the Pacific, okay, or Oceania. Did you know? Okay, so those of you who are listening, did you know that based on ocean size alone, 
50.1% belongs to the Pacific. Okay? So that's just the Pacific Ocean. So here, you know, we get to understand and appreciate how big and how vast where we live is in comparison to other parts of the world. Yeah, so that's something to kind of ponder on. And for us as uh, uh, people of Oceania, to, to be proud of where we come from. And it's very important as a result that we should know all these facts as teachers and as parents, we are teachers from home, we need to tell our children these facts, yeah? So 50.1% is what they say for Pacific Ocean, 26% is the Atlantic Ocean, 20.5 Indian Ocean, and 3.4 Arctic Ocean. Yeah, so there you go. So that puts us into, you know, looking at the whole world and looking at this map. Yeah, so we actually play a very important role globally. So taking us back 100 and plus years ago, no wonder, you know, Portugal, Spain, France, Russia, the US, all these places, you know, um, including Germany, they were interested in our region. There were so many things that was happening in our region, even though we were the last kind of like, as they say, the last frontier, yeah? But there's a lot of things that we need to celebrate that comes from uh, this part of the world. Now, did you know, okay, <laughs> that the deepest trench in the world is in Oceania? Really? Okay, the really? deepest, the deepest of the deepest trench. As you know, there's lots and lots of trenches all around the world, but the deepest, is up in the Northern Marianas. Okay? So the Mariana Trench is the deepest, and I've got the numbers. It's 11,022 meters. Okay? If I convert it into feet, because I now live in the US, Dr. Kirsty, it's 36,161 <laughs> feet deep. Okay, so that's, yeah. So, you know, it's just amazing to, uh, look at all these facts and realize, wow, there's a lot happening in our region. And the question is, how much, how much of this information do we know? Mm -hmm. That's why this webinar that Dr. Kirsten and I are organizing is so crucial for us as a people. The other fact about, did you know, fact, <laughs> that the tallest mountain in the world is also in Oceania, okay? And it's behind my house, right? So uh, not, not literally, but just, you know, I can see it from where I live. It's Mauna Kea. Okay, so it's, uh, they kind of play uh, back to back with the uh, Mount Everest. But yeah. if, we, um, uh, if we count it from the bottom of the ocean, we are the tallest in the world. Okay, so from the surface uh, to the top at Mauna Kea is 4,206 meters. But um, if you count it from right below uh, the ocean, to the top is 9,632 meters. So we are 782 meters higher than Mount Everest. No way. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 so, you know, so it's kind of a good way to set the scene um, about this amazing webinar that, you know, you and I have started. And um, for all of us to remind ourselves how special this region is. There's just two facts. You know, the line is long, but um, I will just focus on those two because uh, part of our dis discussion today is looking at the geology of the Pacific region and yeah, mm -hmm. the geology of Oceania and um, uh, making us appreciate uh, about uh, the places where we live. So I'm from Fiji, as you can see there, it's right in the middle. So I always tell my friends that we are the center of the universe, because we are. <laughs> so it's right there in the middle. And then I lived in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and then now I live in Hawaii. So, and then for you, Dr. Kirsty, you uh, worked in Papua New Guinea, yeah? Yes, yes that's right. And, and Fiji. And Fiji. Yes. And now, um, well, been most of the time based in Melbourne. Okay. All right, so there you go. And you did some work too in Darwin? Yes, that's um, right. So way up the top of Australia. Right. Couldn't be further away from home <laughs> within my own country, but yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so it's really kind of just a way to, you know, put everything into perspective uh, by looking at our beautiful region and appreciating our islands, uh, also our ocean, 
but also, um, you know, understanding what's underneath the ocean. Um, that's just amazing. So I'm going to share uh, some of those facts with you. Mm, yeah, so the next slide. Awesome. Yeah, so um, in this picture, um, again, you know, showing uh, a lot of our young people, and I think I deliberately, uh, you know, include um, these images to show uh, these are the, our young people of today. Yeah, so uh, so much beauty and so much color and so much promise. And I think despite the COVID-19, um, you know, uh, uh, situation that we are facing at the moment, um, you know, we, we're hoping that our young people, you know, will um, have a brighter future if we, I think, yeah, put some plan of action together, you know, how we manage our natural resources, mm. um, how we, you know, look after our indigenous knowledge, how we incorporate the knowledge from our elders who are still alive today to transmit some of their knowledge to the current generation. I think that's, uh, this is quite a powerful picture because in the whole of Oceania, uh, we have a very, very young population. Mm. Mm. Okay, so um, as uh, most of you would know by looking at, uh, you know, the, the division. Um, so as I was saying, you know, I, even though I use the word Oceania, I'll just use this for convenience, yeah, for today. Particularly for some of you who uh, may not be that familiar with uh, uh, our region. So uh, in many publications, you've got Micronesia, Polynesia, and Melanesia being used quite a lot in many um, publications and books. Uh, but if you see Fiji, we always being the problematic one. Uh, if you look at this map, we are into Melanesia. Some publications, we are under poly. And then some publications, we are in both. <laughs> and so uh, it makes it very fascinating. But then for me, I want to add into the problem uh, is that we also have some Micronesian influence. Mm -hmm. And the Micronesian influence into Fiji was based on navigation. So we have to acknowledge our uh, navigators of Micronesia, uh, they also in, in, uh, contributed um, to some of the uh, amazing uh, double hull canoes that we, uh, that Fiji is well known for in the field of uh, navigation. Uh, the Ndomondomo, which is the mast, yeah, the mast that the sail is attached to, um, has some influence um, from our navigators in Micronesia. Yeah, so it's something that uh, uh, for us in Fiji, I always tell, um, you know, when there's a debate as to which of these groups, you know, that we belong to, I often say, you know, let's not debate, let's celebrate. Mm. Celebrate the fact that, um, you know, before the groups came to be, you know, the whole Oceania region was one. Yeah, so the whole Oceania region was one. And I always never forget the map that um, Captain Cook uh, put together with Tupaya the Tahitian navigator. So they were writing this map in Tahiti, but Tupaia even wrote the island of Rotuma on his map. So he knew the islands to his west, yeah, the west of Tahiti. He knew the islands of my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Captain Cook and his team, they wrote, the, 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 they drew the map, but he named all of them. Yeah, so there you go. That's another wonderful example of uh, how our people were, were well-known navigators and they were well-known of creating this amazing ocean uh, um, ocean going vessels that were yeah that were what do you call uh, dr Kirsty, yeah that were that marveled a lot of the you know the palanas that came into the region you've got uh, anything you want to share in that regard Kirsty, about these big canoes the big canoes oh well all i can think of is drua you know how there was a big celebration of drua there was a um performance going on when i was in suva a couple of years ago and just um yeah that there has been that focus on how important they were in bringing people in and remembering those really amazing navigational skills and how to read the the water really yes um, yeah absolutely and i think even at the you know some books and even at the fiji museum um it's been known that uh, some of the large ocean vessels the double hull canoe or the nrua that is known for fiji as you mentioned uh, dr kirsty um is that uh, yeah some of them were recorded in uh, captain cook's journal uh, they had about average of 300 people uh, on one canoe yeah that's minus the cargo that's yeah so that alone <laughs> you know <laughs> 
reminds us again, you know, the ingenuity um, that our, our, you know, ancestors have. You know, they are scientists in their own right. Mm. Um, they are, you know, meteorologists. They are, yeah, they are, you name it, all the, all the scientific words that you can put together. They're botanists. They know the trees. They know which trees to, to, to use for certain vessels. Mm. Um, and yeah, in, and even they have the way of, uh, um, you know, using the mani um, mani, the coconut sinat, you know, to put, to join all the wood together. And then also the use of the glue, all natural, you know. And uh, yeah, every time, you know, I talk about this or I read about it, it's just kind of like, man, this information needs to be shared. It needs to be shared to our younger generation. And I'm so happy uh, for many of you who are listening in today. Yeah. Okay, so um, for the benefit of those of you who may not be familiar with the region, so I've got a couple of slides that kind of... Um, sort of you know differentiate the three regions of melanesia uh, polynesia and micronesia so i usually use this uh, in my classes too so that the students can kind of get to appreciate and know um, how these words came to be uh, and then towards the end i kind of say to them you only learn that to know the islands but at the end of the day uh, knowing that these words were given to us yeah mm -hmm. so looking at these pictures here uh, Melanesia incorporates uh, the islands of Vanuatu, uh, New Caledonia, um, Fiji, uh, the Solomon Islands, uh, and where did I miss? Vanuatu, New Caledonia, Solomon Islands, Fiji. Yeah, yeah, that's us. Um, so these are some of the pictures that I've in included here. Um, again, I think I should also include the Torres Strait Islanders. Mm. Um, you know, they are part, uh, they kind of incorporated under Australia, but they also have um, connections with Papua New Guinea. They're such a beautiful place. Um, and of course, West Papua, we always remember them too, um, you know, as part of knowing uh, our prehistory. Yeah, so they were part of us. So again, yeah, there's so much beauty um, in looking at the picture on the right, especially our hair uh, and our shell ornaments. Yeah, that's something that, uh, you know, we're very proud of. For me, I, uh, yeah, wear my fro everywhere I go. <laughs> there should be a t-shirt there, Kirsty. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's something that, uh, you know, puts uh, my country in the world everywhere I travel to. Uh, people often, you know, hey, are you from Fiji? So it's kind of a, a nice way to connect with people. Um, so I'm proud to, to wear my hair like this. But that's something that the anthropologists, when they came in the 1800s, they knew that a lot of us in the Melanesian region share uh, the same feature like this. And I'm sure we're all proud of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there you go. So that's the, the map of the islands that incorporated what Melanesia is today. So there's Papua New Guinea there, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, and uh, Fiji, and New Caledonia uh, is just down to the south of Vanuatu. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, one thing I admire and uh, celebrate with uh, the region of Melanesia is the color. Um, and of course, the beautiful smiles. Yeah, the children are so, so beautiful. And again, in uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, a place of more than what, 800 languages, Kirsty? Yes, yeah. Yes, 800. Uh, I think somebody said it should be more than 1,000, but uh, definitely everybody knows the 800 uh, number. But uh, yeah, again, it just shows the 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 beauty of uh, Papua New Guinea and the languages they, celebrate, they, they possess. So 800 languages in PNG and more than 100 in Vanuatu alone. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So again, again, the picture here, I love the one on the left here. So these are the women of Solomon Islands in, uh, from the island of Malaita and the use of shells yeah, as part of their uh, body ornaments mm -hmm. uh, or body adornment mm -hmm. and to the right uh, women of Fiji. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, to the region of Micronesia. So the key here is micro. Um, yes, yeah, so even though they are referred to as small, uh, but they represent such a vast region of ocean. Um, so these are the islands that is incorporated under Micronesia. You've got Kiribati, Nauru, uh, Federated States of Micronesia. So under the FSM, we've got Yap, Chuk, uh, Pompeii, and Kosrai. 
under the FSM. And then Palau, Saipan, the Marianas, and Guam. Yeah, so again, such a beautiful place. And I think in the next couple of slides, um, I've got a couple of images from uh, those this, this region. Okay. Mm. So just look at that. Yeah, again, the ocean that surrounds this beautiful um, uh, place. I was speaking to a Fijian uh, girl, uh, Dr. Kirsty, uh, from Fiji. We went to the same high school. She's a pilot. Um, she flies in, uh, you know, some of the islands up there in uh, Kiribati. Uh -huh. um, and it's just amazing to see uh, her daily stories. And then another colleague of mine who works in the museum in Tarawa, uh, the capital of Kiribati, she's, she told me that if she wants to fly to Christmas Island, which is an island in Kiribati alone, she had to fly to Fiji and then catch another plane from Fiji to go back to Kiribati to wow. go back to that particular island. So that just shows how wide and vast um, this, this, this region is. Yeah? So getting us to appreciate um, uh, the northern part of Oceania. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, uh, those are the four places I talked about, yeah, under the FSM. So Yap, Chuk, uh, Pompeii, and Kosrai. Okay, so there's more islands here. So again, uh, making us appreciate, see, asking the question, who is your neighbor? Okay, so it's very important. Uh, the, our brothers and sisters in the northern part of Oceania, they know who their neighbors are. They know the Palawans and Yap and look at all those islands. So I'm challenging our people who are listening today. If you're from the southern part of Oceania, let's spend a couple of hours today to learn about the islands up in the northern part of Oceania. Let's learn about them, yeah? And another thing too that I do, Dr. Kirsty, I get my students to say the name of the island, yeah? So when you say it, yeah, you, you confirm it and you know it and you'll remember it, yeah? So that's another kind of technique, yeah, of getting our students or our learners to appreciate our islands. Mm. Good way to memorize things. Yes. Absolutely. And again, here, look at this. Look at these beautiful colors, right? Um, and our young people again. And I think that's the, uh, the aim of uh, this presentation, eh, Dr. Kirsty, to try and get our young ones. Uh, mm -hmm. As I was saying before, it's a youthful population uh, we have in Oceania right now. And these are going to be the future of Oceania. And uh, what a way to, you know, celebrate our cultures and continue um, leaving the legacy for our young ones. Mm. Okay, so more faces. So I just love putting up pictures like this. And again, it's very important, you know, for us to be reminded that these islands, most of them, you know, are not empty. We have people on the islands. So uh, these are the people that occupy uh, many of the islands that we saw on the map. Okay, so here we're going to move quickly to Polynesia. Yes, yeah, so poly means many. Yeah, so uh, we'll go on to the next uh, slide. So now we've kind of learned a little bit about Mela, uh, Melanesia. So Mela comes from the word melanin. Uh, so coming using the word dark skin. Yeah, so the dark skin. Um, and then you've got micro, which is small. So it was referred to as smaller islands and smaller people. So the physical features of the islanders were small. So they were referred to as that. And now we're into poly. Poly means many yeah so to them is the many islands so there you go so you can see um the islands there so i'm part of it right now so i'm at the top of the triangle uh, hawaii and then you have aotearoa on the southwestern corner and then of course rapa nui to the eastern corner okay so these are uh, pictures again of our young uh, polynesian youths see again showing and celebrating the youthfulness of our people Okay, um, so now we're going to go to uh, the part two of uh, the presentation today is looking at the past. Okay, so Oceania of the past. So we're going to talk about the geography and the geology. And uh, I love talking about volcanoes. I have one right behind my house too. <laughs> so I've got the tallest mountain, uh, Dr. Kirsty, and then I've got the uh, Kilauea volcano right there, one hour away from here. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, celebrating um, the geology of this region. So I'm going to just focus on the ring of fire. 
yeah, the Ring of Fire. Um, so I've got a couple of slides that uh, I hope will, uh, uh, yeah, will remind us about how active this region is. So I showed you the map and we looked at the data that we are 50% of the world's ocean. So we've got the ocean up here, but what is happening underneath? And the question is, what is happening under our very island? So it's kind of something that I was really interested to share today. So if you look at the map there, the Ring of Fire, yeah, so you can see uh, Oceania down there. Yeah, so it kind of uh, goes all the way to um, Vanuatu. So you must know that the island of Tana has an active volcano right now as we speak. And in New Zealand, uh, I lived there for 18 years, uh, Dr. Kirsty. Uh, I think we used to earthquakes. Mm -hmm. um, I remember living in uh, Wellington. Uh, sometimes when I'm having my breakfast, I can see the my cup moving or shaking. Oh, really? So yeah. So we have you know tremors. Um, and also I worked at the at the Te Papa Museum. So that museum is a very interesting museum because it's got um, at the bottom of the building it's got rubber um, rubber um, structures. Oh. Uh, that can withstand earthquakes. So when the earthquake happens, the rubber can kind of still maintain or hold on to the building. So very interesting how um, architecture is brought into the picture because of how active our region is, mm. right? So the question is, why do they have to do that at Te Papa to build that structure? Because they know that New Zealand is very, very geologically active. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want us to have this class or session to remind us, yes, we do live in a very active region. So as you can see there on the map, see, look at those triangles there. Those shows the places that are active. Yeah, so something for you uh, to think about and place yourself into this ring of fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you notice the map with Hawaii, so where I'm actually speaking from, I've got a red triangle right there. Yeah. So there you go. Yes. Yeah? So every now and then we uh, feel, you know, the tremor. Um, and I think Papua New Guinea two weeks ago, they had a very large earthquake. And um, maybe at this point, uh, wanting to remind ourselves to remember that huge tsunami in Aitate, in the north of uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, that um, happened early in the morning, uh, about eight o'clock. Uh, there was a huge earthquake. So earthquakes and um, um, earthquakes and tsunami are related. Okay? So the, I'll just maybe touch a little bit about that. Maybe in the next slide, you might have some of those um, information as well. Yeah, see, look at all of this. Um, so it's kind of taking us, uh, Dr. Kirsty, into the topic of plate tectonics. Mm -hmm. yeah, so right underneath our islands, uh, we have uh, the two big plates, the Pacific plate and the Indo-Australian -Austra plate. Okay, so these are the plates on top of the Earth's surface that moves. Okay, so they, they, are, they're quite, uh, uh, they are quite movable, so they move all the time. And so um, the plate boundaries, it kind of uh, de de makes us learn three um, elements of uh, this kind of plate. So one is divergent. So these plates underneath, there are certain plates that move away from each other, diverge. Okay. And then you've got convergent. So convergent plates that move in together. They have to go in together. And then you've got transform. Transform plate boundary, they slide past each other. Okay, so very interesting um, to know about these plates. Okay, and um, to give you an example, the St. Andreas Fault in uh, the United States is an example of a transform plate. Yeah, so the plate, they move past each other. Um, and I think the 2003, no, 2013 um, earthquake in Christchurch, you know, the big one that happened there, mm -hmm. it was part of a transformed plate boundary. They're moving, um, but going against each other. So that was the big earthquake that happened there. Uh, the convergent example is in the Andes Mountains. So if you look across in the South American uh, region, uh, this is an example of a convergent, so they're moving in. And the divergent uh, plate is the East Pacific rise. Okay, so uh, on the East Pacific rise, it's closer to um, the South American continent. You've got this huge 
row of mountains under the ocean. Isn't that amazing? You know, and to me, I hope that in today's discussion, you know, we can be able to appreciate our islands, geography, our ocean, you know, Oceania, but also what's underneath. Yeah, that is making these places, uh, islands move. That's why um, sometimes when the boundaries, they go, you know, hit on each other like this or converge like this, um, that's where sometimes we have earthquakes, yeah, and also tsunamis. I remember uh, Professor Patrick Nunn, uh, one of my lecturers, he is very animative in his classes, and I love the way he describes how the plate moves. And I remember when he was explaining how the Pacific plate was going inside, like he always go like this, um, the Indo-Australian plate, and then he mentions that when sometimes the plate go underneath, it takes, absorbs all the water. Oh. You know, that's why sometimes, you know, when you have people say, hey, you know, the water or the ocean is going out. Oh. That's where the water is going into. You know, so that's area that we don't really see. And then the water has to come out. And guess what happens after that? What, yeah. what does the water turn into? Tsunami. Mm. Yeah. So it's kind of something that we need to learn and be, f be familiar with uh, because we live in the region. We often take all of these things for granted. And I think it's very important that we be aware of our surroundings. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's, those are some kind of uh, um, ge geological terms. Another one is called um, the subduction zones. Yeah, the subduction zones are exactly how I was explaining before. Um, when one plate go under the other. Yeah, so very interesting to see a lot of these things that are happening. And for me, um, living in Fiji, Dr. Kirsty, I've seen um, uh, pumice. Pumice, you know, the, these are the remnants of underwater volcanoes. Oh, yes. So, you know, again, for our listeners, you know, how many of you are familiar with the word sawata? Uh, we call it Sawata in Fijian. And you can see, you know, acres and acres on top of the ocean. You just see palms all floating on the ocean because these are the lava that actually exploded from underwater volcanoes. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, you know, something that uh, from this talk today, uh, making us appreciate about our geology and make us appreciate about our geography. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so we go to the next slide. Yes, so there you go. So I'm sure we, can, we will share these uh, slides to uh, anyone who is interested to access any, any of this. I'm sure uh, Dr. Kirsty will include some of this into a workbook mm -hmm. and um, she will include the workbook in her website. So this is kind of more talking about what I was talking about before and yeah, looking at the different plates. So see, if you see below uh, the top picture, you can see the Indo-Australian plate. Australia is on top of one of it. <laughs> yeah, isn't that interesting? There you go, Kirsty. You are on top of the yeah. Indo-Australian plate. Yeah, and uh, Fiji and uh, um, Hawaii, we on the Pacific plate. Yeah, so no wonder if you see Fiji, um, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, with such a very interesting active zone. Mm. Uh, there's always earthquakes, there's always volcanoes. So one good example is definitely Vanuatu. Yeah, so if you see the line, if you follow it through, uh, the island of Tana. Yeah, so they have an active volcano right now as we speak. And the, the map below, it has got all those areas that are active. So all the areas that are in red, hopefully today will remind you yeah, of the geology of where we live in this world. Mm. Okay. So this is a, a lovely picture again, um, you know, taking all the water out. <laughs> so this is a, one image I love, you know, because now you actually see what's underneath. Oh, yeah. I see. So that's North America up in the yes. top right hand corner. And so this is the like um, underwater scape, I guess. Yes. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that amazing, eh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you can see the East Pacific rise, the one that I was talking about, is the rise that was on the uh, the coast close to South America. That's the East Pacific rise. It's and a huge mountain range underneath. 
Yes, and the uh, Mariana's trench must be the one up the top, right? Yeah. Hmm. That is an amazing <laughs> image. Amazing. Yes. Yes, yes. So it's kind of something to think about, something to remind ourselves, especially when we look at how our ancestors came into the Oceania region. How did they come here? Um, when was it populated by, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, our ancestors when they came in? What was the region like? Mm. You know, so that's kind of um, an area that I want to talk about now. Um, from a geological point of view, uh, we've got uh, a, a time zone called Holocene. Yeah, the Holocene period, which was like 10,000 years ago. So you're talking about thousands of years ago. Uh, and it's hard to comprehend because most of us only live up to 100 if we are lucky, right? So our memory will always be very short. But we have to thank geologists and we have to thank uh, geographers, uh, paleontologists, archaeologists who spend their time and energy studying about the earth so that we can understand about ourselves, so that we can understand how our islands were, you know, inhabited 3,000 years ago when the first, you know, um, a set of uh, Fijians came into the region. And then you take it further, more than, you know, 50 years ago, uh, 50,000 years ago, um, it uh, makes pa Papua New Guinea, yeah, the oldest of our lot in the Pacific. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so just food for thought. Uh, I hope that in our next class, um, we'll be able to share more about this. So, because it's very important um, that we know what's happening today because of the issue of climate change. Oh, yeah. um, I was sharing, yeah, I was sharing in one of my classes before uh, Dr. Kirsty, is that some of our archeological sites are underwater. Mm. In Samoa, the Mulifonua site, it's a Lapita site which was, you know, inhabited 3,000 years ago, it's actually underwater. Mm. And so if you look at Samoa, um, the island of Savai, the island of Upolu, and if you look at American Samoa, it's got a very, very active zone. Sometimes when earthquakes happen, some islands rise, up, rise out of the ocean. And sometimes when there's an earthquake, some of the islands go under. Yeah. So this is something that for us to understand and appreciate. Maybe if you are from the Pacific, uh, you are listening in, maybe this is time that you can maybe record some of our old stories from where you're from. If you're from Samoa, if you're from Tonga, let's hear some of the old stories of the past. Some of our ancestors may have recorded some chants, some dances that talks about some islands that arise in the morning and then disappear the very next day. All right? So sometimes people say, oh, it's supernatural, but maybe it's something to do with geology. Mm. Yeah, so making us appreciate what's happening. And also speaking about Holocene 10,000 years ago, it was very different from what we see today. Now many of our islands are underwater. Now the question is, was it like that when our ancestors arrived? Yeah, so something that I want you to, and to think about, and then we can answer that in the next uh, uh, webinar. Eh? But today, I just want to bring it closer to home and think about geology and geography in the sphere of climate change. What is something that we can all think about and act on right now? Because this is something that is not only affecting our region up in the north, it's affecting all of us. Yeah. So let's see what I uh, prepared here today. Yes. So these are some of the pictures uh, in Tuvalu. A couple of years ago, they um, had the Pacific Forum meeting uh, in Tuvalu. And it was really beautiful to see the elders and the young people of Tuvalu taking um, charge of the issue of climate change and really getting their voices heard. And uh, I have to say, I really admire the smaller islands of Tuvalu, um, Kiribati. Um, Marshall Islands, you know, they are the ones that are geologically small, geographically small, um, but their voices are so loud. You know, they, they're speaking on all our behalf. And I think it's very important in um, uh, our webinar today is to make us um, think of our neighbors, yeah? knowing who our neighbors are, but also understanding what they're going through. Because many of these islands, is, and as we all know, are facing the issue of a sea level rise, and they are facing it on a daily basis. Okay, um, so in the next couple of slides, I've uh, uh, incorporated these images to make us think about 
uh, our role in the whole discussion of Oceania, thinking about our prehistory, thinking about history right now and thinking about our future. Okay? So something that we can all um, act on. And then now looking at these images as well, um, some of uh, the regions that are facing the full brunt of climate change. Mm. And uh, here are the leaders of the Pacific region, including Australia, I think, and uh, um, New Zealand. So we can see uh, Jacinda as well as uh, the Prime Minister in Australia uh, over there. So, yeah. yeah, is it, do you know his name, uh, Dr. Kirsten? Yeah, Scott Morrison. Morrison, or yes. Gomo, we call him. Okay. <laughs> so, so I hope that this picture will uh, provide some hope uh, for all of us that are listening in today, um, especially when we are, you know, um, thinking about our past, but I hope we don't forget our past. I really want us from some of the takings from this uh, webinar is for us to maybe take some lessons from our elders, take our lessons from the, our ancestors. What did they do when they faced with this kind of climatic issues? Yeah. So um, let's see what I have in the remaining uh, images as well, my oh, sister. This is where I've put in some stuff that I had um, that I had from um, Papua New Guinea. But I think we might talk about that next time, right? Because we're, we've taken up, we're nearly, we've been going for about an hour. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we can... So you want to do this later? Yeah, I think so. I'm just worried that um, people are going to run out of data and stuff. Okay. All right. Mm. Yep. Okay, so that's cool. And yeah, so I think that's uh, um, some of the key things that I want to share, uh, you know, making us appreciate uh, about our, our region, um, geologically speaking, uh, geographically speaking, uh, thinking about what young people can do um, today um, in terms of uh, the issue of climate change, uh, but also for me, um, really encouraging us to, uh, you know, take a leaf of uh, uh, encouragement from our past. Yeah, so thinking about our past, thinking about um, what our ancestors actually did uh, when they arrived into the Oceania region and what we can learn from them taking us to the future. Mm. Yep, so I leave it there, my sister. Yes, Vinaka, that was awesome. Um, yeah, there's so much more to talk about, isn't there? But it's so nice to just start. And I've enjoyed thinking about volcanoes and stuff again because it's been a long time since I've really sat down and read about <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, and there was actually an earthquake not too far from my mum and dad's house the other week. And so, yeah, it does happen here. It's not, not nearly as frequent as it is in places like New Zealand, but it does happen. Um, mm. Yeah, and I can't, I can't see any questions coming up on Facebook, but what we might do, like I said at the start, is just respond to anybody who puts up questions in the comments section, and I think that might be the best way to go. Sure, yep, let's do um, it. Yeah, and then the next session, um, we can build around what people are interested in and also... Um, just expand on what we were talking about so the stuff i was going to talk about was on um the evidence we have of human migration and using papua new guinea as a big example but we can go beyond that because of the work that you've done i know you've done stuff with lapita pottery and um you were on the dig at singatoka weren't you that was yes. one of your sites yes and, absolutely and yeah so that that would be awesome but like thinking about sweet potato even and beetle nut and all that sort of stuff i love yes. thinking about food food's always at the center for me <laughs> in my day to day <laughs> and then and more and more in my teaching so um yeah that's that's what i might talk about next time um yes yeah but i think it's it's a nice refresher too of where everything is i think um I've been lucky to go to Guam for Pacific History Conferences and um, where else do we go? Fiji's been one of the bases, but that's been cancelled this year because of corona. Mm. So that's a shame, but um, yeah, it's there's so many different 
parts of the Pacific, it's quite diverse. But then, like you said, there's so much that unifies everyone. Yes. And thinking about the ocean that unites everybody rather than the, the islands that might be a bit more distant or different. Yes. Um, yes, and I think I maybe I can uh, acknowledge uh, Professor Epeli Hawafa, mm. yeah, um, the you know Tongan um, professor, the late uh, Professor Epeli Hawafa, who really pushed uh, for the word Oceania. Mm. And I think uh, you know when I think about it, uh, he wrote it in his paper in 1993. That was the same year I was here in Hilo as an exchange student, and actually I bumped into him in Honolulu. Uh, and I did know that that particular time when I met him, he presented a paper and pushed for the word Oceania over the word Pacific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that paper has been so important for so many people who have studied or worked in the Pacific. And yeah, so how amazing that you got to come across him and yeah. his ideas. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Absolutely. Mm. Um, all right, well, maybe we'll shut it down for today. Yes, um, okay. And then we can share. I'll send you the file and all that sort of thing, but I'll, I'll message you okay. later on Messenger. All right, awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Naka. <laughs> okay. Naka, <laughs> 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 <laughs>